With camping season just around the corner, we thought this would be a great time to talk about camping etiquette. And yes, there is such a thing. Most of us just don't realize it until we're camped next to a nightmare. Some of you may know that camp hosting is our main work camping gig. So we've seen a lot of nightmare campers. From those who blare their music and get into drunken brawls to those who trash campsites, disrespect our parks, forests, and wildlife. The lack of camping etiquette, AKA social etiquette, is real. So today, we're gonna to share the most common bad habits we see from campers every year. And we're going to include the habits that create dangerous situations for everyone, but also the lesser known or talked about bad habits that even good campers may not know are offensive or annoying to others. So without further ado, let's find out what kind of camper you are. So before we get into what qualifies a person as a good or bad camper, we first need to know the definition of camping etiquette. Camping etiquette is best described as common courtesy for fellow campers and, of course, utilizing basic common sense. Unfortunately, whenever these two things are a requirement for anything, problems quickly arise. To keep the topics we're going to discuss organized and to limit the length of this video, because we could talk all day long about the bad habits of campers. We've narrowed it down to two categories. One is common courtesy and the other is safety hazards. In each category, we're gonna share three really bad camping habits more than just a few campers are guilty of. Now, there are certainly more than just six bad camping habits deserving of a place in the spotlight. So we're gonna make sure that we give those a quick shout out at the end of the video as well. So no worries there. But the ones we've decided to talk a little more about are the ones we see most frequently. And before you think you already know which bad habits we've included, well, you might just be surprised by some of them and even guilty of a couple yourself. Okay, first category is common courtesy. And the first bad habit that displays a total lack of it is... So here's the thing. If you find yourself camping in an area that's peaceful and quiet, there's a really, really good chance that other campers went there for the peace and quiet. Makes sense, right? I mean, the last thing another camper wants to hear is a bunch of excessively loud and obnoxious campers and or their blaring music. If they did, they would have gone to a nightclub. And before anyone gets too upset, no one's saying that alcohol, tunes, and good times should be outlawed but everyone does expect their fellow campers to be respectful of their neighbors and to behave like adults. As camp hosts, we see all kinds of trash left behind and scattered throughout campsites. Mostly though, we see things like beer bottles and cans, beer bottle caps and tabs, cigarette butts, food, all kinds of nutshells, napkins and paper towels, fishing line and hooks, Glass, uh, food and non-food wrappers, including boxes and containers, rubber bands, and miscellaneous plastics. And if that wasn't bad enough, some campers even leave bags of trash, broken tents, tables, chairs, and all sorts of things behind for someone else, namely the camp host, to clean up and haul off to the dumpster for them. So I'm just going to put this out there for all the campers who trash their sites and refuse to clean up after themselves. The way you leave a site speaks volumes about who you are. When a camper leaves a trashy site, they are disrespecting nature and the home it provides to its true residents, meaning the wildlife, and they're also disrespecting the people who have to clean up after them and their fellow campers who always do their part to keep an area clean. In short, a campsite is just an extension of a camper, so leave a good impression. Okay. So this is one of those bad habits that even great campers can be guilty of. I mean, there are campers who respect their neighbors, the campgrounds, pack out everything they pack in, and many times even leave their campsite cleaner than they found it. But for some reason, all that courtesy flies out the window as soon as they decide to place toilet paper they just wipe their poopy butt with in the bathroom trash can instead of in the flushable toilet. The number one complaint for campers when it comes to bathrooms is, 
other campers leaving toilet paper and baby wipes they've just wiped their butt with sunny side up if you catch my drift in the bathroom trash can and it's a pretty legitimate complaint i mean no one wants to look at or smell someone else's poop like really i challenge you ask the person you're sitting next to right now or the next person you see maybe that's your neighbor or a co-worker if they would like to join you in the bathroom so that you can show them your toilet paper after you wipe your poopy butt with it and then get back to us and let let us know the number of people who actually said they would and we'll wait And while we're sure anyone guilty of this will immediately dismiss such behavior with the old, it's not environmentally friendly to flush it excuse, they should know that leaving feces exposed for others to see and smell has nothing to do with being environmentally friendly. It does, however, have everything to do with a complete lack of common courtesy and social etiquette, especially when all a person would have to do is wrap it up before placing it in the trash. So if you don't want to flush it, even though flushable toilets are being provided for you for that very reason, then wrap it up before placing it in a trash can so no one else has to see it or smell it. <laughs> yeah, stop being gross. Next category, safety hazards. But first, if you guys are enjoying this video so far, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. It all helps to get our videos seen by more people and it's a great way to support the time and effort we put into making them. And we certainly appreciate that. Okay, back to safety hazards. And here we're gonna talk about three things campers do that place their own lives, the lives of others, the wildlife, and the forests and parks at risk. And the first one is... The number one rule in camping is... Put out your fire. Even with signs posted everywhere, fire safety and park regulation literature provided directly to campers and verbal warnings as well, campers will still leave fires burning unattended and fail to extinguish them before they pack up and leave. So just so that everyone knows what extinguishing a fire really means, let us tell you what it doesn't mean. It does not mean covering it with sand or pouring water on it so that nothing is left but smoke. Both of these methods are wrong. The most effective way to put out a fire is to drown it, stir it, and then drown it again. You shouldn't see any smoke and it should be cold to the touch. So here's the thing. If the only person in jeopardy of dying from a camper's failure to put out a fire was the camper who started it, I doubt too many people would have a problem with it, right? Unfortunately though, that's seldom the case. It's the innocent people, the animals, and the entire forest that are either injured or killed and destroyed. So please do everyone a favor and don't go camping if you can't adhere to the number one rule, which is put out your fire. Campgrounds located in bear country have very strict but simple rules when it comes to storing your food. All food is to be stored in the bear box located within the campsite. Failure to do this will land you a hefty fine and most certainly an encounter with a bear or other wildlife. In addition to food, anything fragranced or with a scent, meaning soap, lotion, deodorant, bug spray, and just anything with a scent or smell should also be stored in the bear box. Remember, bears are wild animals, and although some may have acclimated to the invasion of campgrounds and humans, they are still wild. This means they're unpredictable. Don't think that just because you banged a couple pots together and scared off a bear in the past, that all bears in the future will react the same. We've seen otherwise. And while you're never guaranteed an encounter-free stay while camping in areas wildlife call home, it's very unlikely that a bear or other wildlife will be interested in your site as long as you properly store all your food and scented items. And the less contact humans and wildlife have, the better off both will be. Unfortunately though, there's always that one camper who dismisses the rules and creates that unwanted hazardous situation for everyone else and the wildlife. But besides the obvious problems that could arise from enticing a bear or other large wild animal into a campsite with food, a whole new set of problems is created once people see it. When it comes to wildlife, and especially the really big kind like bears, campers tend to do one of two things when they spot them. 
they either run away, which is a huge mistake, or they follow the bear to get a picture, which is another huge mistake. We've even seen large crowds start to form around bears in order to catch a glimpse or even take pictures. Just like people, bears don't like to be followed, chased, antagonized, or trapped. Doing any of these things will force a bear into fight or flight mode. And if that happens, someone may get injured or even die. And as a result, the bear may get euthanized, which seems extremely unfair considering the situation was created by humans. Tragedy can best be avoided by simply leaving them alone. Remember, it's never a bear's fault for being wild. It's our fault for expecting it to behave otherwise. Okay, so those are the six bad camping habits we see the most, but that doesn't mean we don't see a thousand more on a daily basis, and all of which are just as annoying, disgusting, unsafe, or downright dangerous as those that made it into our top six. So, here are nine more really bad habits way too many campers are guilty of, and why nine, not ten? Because ten's just so unoriginal. Everyone's doing ten. Disregarding quiet times. Most campgrounds, if not all of them, have a quiet time, which simply means you can't run generators during a certain time, usually between 9 or 10 p.m. and 6 or 8 a.m. And this rule is set in place for obvious reasons. But don't you know, there's always that one camper who thinks the rule applies to everyone else except them. Rude. Speeding through the campground. Just like regular roadways and highways, the speed limits within campgrounds are set for a reason. And considering the high pedestrian traffic, a large portion of which is children, five or 10 miles an hour is not unreasonable. So please, slow down. Dogs off leash. We haven't yet visited one campground that allows dogs off leash. But at the same time, we've never visited one or worked in one where this rule wasn't ignored more than any other. And I already know, people guilty of this are saying right now, my dog is very well behaved and recalls like a champ. And that's great. We wish our dogs would recall. But that rule is in place for many reasons, and we're going to give you a few of them right now. First, just because your dog is friendly doesn't mean that whatever dog they run up to is. If your dog approaches an unfriendly dog that is on a leash and your dog gets bit, whether you agree with it or not, you're responsible for that confrontation. Whenever your dog is not within your immediate control, which is defined by a tether or a leash or some other constraint up to a certain length, your dog is considered at large, and any incident that results from that will be considered your fault. Besides that, as camp hosts, we can't tell you how many dogs become lost, get hit by cars inside and outside of the campground, and get bitten, attacked, or even killed by wildlife, including coyotes and snakes, all because they weren't on a leash. There are numerous reasons this is a rule in just about any campground you'll ever visit and a law in any city you'll ever visit too. And it's actually a good thing. Whether you believe it or not, one of its purposes is to keep your dog safe. And what do you know? This just happens to be the perfect setup for our next really bad camping habit, which is, Failing to pick up your dog's poop. We'll keep this real short. It's your dog. That means it's your poop. You got to pick it up. Knocking on the camp host's door at 3 o'clock in the morning to buy firewood. Yeah, don't do that. Disrobing in public. Campgrounds are family-oriented destinations, not nude beaches or sets for soft porn, okay? So keep your clothes on, people. Using a bear horn just because. It is worse than nails on a chalkboard. For the love of everything good, please stop. Failing to flush the toilet and getting urine all over it. What are you, three? And finally, asking how much it costs to ride the bears. Okay, so maybe you're watching this video and have just discovered that you're a bad camper. What do you do? Well, the first step to improving upon anything is to admit you've been a bad, bad camper. And the second step requires you to simply stop it. And just like that, you can go from bad camper to great camper. And who doesn't want to be a great camper? And on that note, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like 
hit that notification button so you won't miss our next video and subscribe to our channel. It all helps support what we're doing here. And until next time, we'll catch you down the road. Bye. Thanks for watching. Take care now.